Welcome to iLecture Online. Now let's take a look at the major stats of the planet Jupiter. The major numbers that we associate with every planet. So beginning, starting with the orbital radius. So now we know it's about 5.2 astronomical units away from the Sun at about 778 million kilometers. Wow, that means that light will travel from, um, from the Sun to Jupiter in about 35 to 40 minutes or so, so it's, it's quite a distance. The eccentricity of the orbit is 0 0.048, which makes it about three times as much as it is for the Earth. The orbital speed is a little bit less than half what it is for the Earth, 13.1 km per hour. And the orbital period, it takes Jupiter almost 12 years to make one trip around the Sun. However, the rotation period is much faster than any other planet in the solar system, a little bit faster than Saturn at 9 hours and 50 minutes at the equator and 9 hours and 55 minutes at the poles. Yes, because it's a gas planet just like with the Sun, it rotates faster at the equator than it does at the poles. In the Sun, that's the case as well. Of course, the Sun takes a lot longer to make one rotation. If the Sun rotated that fast, um, I don't know if the Sun could stay together or not. The inclination of the planet is 3.12 degrees, so it has a very slight tilt. And the orbital inclination relative to the ecliptic is just over 1 degree, so it's very, very close. The orbit of Jupiter is very close to the ecliptic. The diameter of the planet at the uh, equator, it's 143,000 kilometers. And from pole to pole, it's only 133,000. So it's almost 7% different between the diameter at the equator versus at the pole. And notice it's about 11.2 Earth diameters at the equator and about 10.5 Earth diameters at the poles. The total mass of the planet just shy of 1.9 times 10 to, the 10 to the 27 kilograms, which means that it has the mass of almost 318 Earths. The density is a little bit over the density of water. It's actually quite a bit more dense than Saturn, and maybe part of it is that it does have that rocky core. It's also a bigger planet, so it's compressed more, and so the density of Jupiter is greater than the density of water. The escape speed to get away from the planet, if you were to land on the planet, of course you can't land on the planet because there's no solid ground to land on, but if you could, hypothetically, and then you wanted to take a you know, take off from the planet, you would have to reach, reach a speed of 60 kilometers per second, which is more than five times the escape speed on the Earth. In other words, it would not be possible to get away from the gravitational pull of, the Earth, of, of uh, Jupiter. It is just too big of a planet with too much gravitational force. You would need an enormous amount of fuel to get away from the planet. It would be virtually impossible. Notice that the surface gravity is a little bit more than twice the gravity on the Earth. In other words, if you weigh 100 pounds on the Earth, you would weigh 236 pounds on the surface of Jupiter. The reason why it's not much more than that is because it's not as dense a planet, so the radius is much bigger, and therefore the gravitational attraction, the surface gravity, isn't quite what it would be if it was a solid planet with metal and, uh, and rock. But nevertheless, the size of the planet does cause you to have to need a very large escape speed to get away. The albedo is actually a bit less than I would expect it to be because it's a gas planet, but it does absorb quite a bit of energy from the sun. It reflects uh, only about 44%, roughly speaking. And the temperature, of course, varies depending upon where you consider the surface of the planet. Where is that? Is it at the cloud tops? Is it at the haze layer? We'll talk a little bit more about the different regions of the atmosphere and where the planet begins. But you can see that at the cloud tops, it's about my minus 108 degrees Celsius, minus 162 degrees Fahrenheit, which is indeed colder than the coldest place ever recorded on the Earth in the Antarctic. The temperature there went down to maybe about 130 or 128 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, they've had a satellite reading, I think went, went down to minus 133, but yes, it's even colder than that all the time at that region in, in Jupiter. Notice that's about 165 Kelvin. And the temperature at the haze layer is actually a little bit less. So if you go a little bit higher, 
then the temperature drops, and then of course you go higher again, then the temperature increases again, just like it does on the Earth. But we'll give you a lot more of the details. So the coldest region in the atmosphere is down to somewhere between 115, 125 Kelvin. We'll talk about it in a little bit more detail. But this is what we have as the major statistics of the planet Jupiter. It's just an absolutely enormous planet. It's a very interesting planet, very beautiful planet. And so that's, if you know this, this will get you ready for, I guess, a test on Jupiter if you need to know these kind of stats. And that is how it's done. When you say that, if, from the previous video, that if the Jupiter, if Jupiter is 80 times bigger? In mass. In mass, yeah. so it's not diameter. Not diameter, that's right. If the mass of Jupiter, it's all about mass. In astronomy, mass is paramount when it comes to talking about stars. And there's always a minimum mass required to generate the gravitational force to build up enough pressure, and therefore enough heat to start nuclear fusion. So it needed 80 times as much mass to turn into a star. Mm, that's right. Okay. <laughs>